Super teams aren't a new concept. We've seen them in professional sports, in soccer, MLB, NBA, and NFL. But could transfer super teams be coming to college football next? Turns out they might already be here. Let's break down how transfer super teams might be taking over the college football landscape with a look at one that may currently be in progress, USC. First things first, how do you build a super team? It comes down to this, bringing in proven talent. Not just blue chip high school athletes, but guys that have proven they can compete and succeed at the collegiate level. Some teams have already began adjusting to this new aspect of recruiting. With the advent and rise in popularity of the transfer portal, your list of prospective players is almost limitless. At any point in time, a great player can choose to leave their current school and open that window of opportunity for another. But transferring isn't a stress-free experience. As a player, you're leaving a team and staff that you've built a relationship with, and sometimes even a good situation, potentially alienating a whole fan base to go somewhere else. Typically, there has to be a good reason to go through the trouble of leaving. For some, it can be homesickness or another personal reason. Others, it might be tension with the coaching staff or issues with playing time. Oftentimes, fifth-year seniors who have already graduated look to go to a school that's of a higher prestige that maybe weren't giving them a look when they were a senior in high school. Maybe a step up in competition to prove to NFL scouts that you can hang with the big dogs sometimes following a coach to a new school. In today's era, you can add another reason to the list, NIL. Let's face it, some schools have more generous boosters than others, and I can't fault any player for wanting to get their bag, because at the end of the day, a career and an injury can happen at the drop of a hat. A transfer super team makes themselves the premier destination for a potential transfer, and that breaks down into a couple of different categories. Poaching. A huge part of bringing in talent is having the right coach to help guide that talent once they arrive on campus. This is multifaceted. You want to help the young men on the team grow as a person, teach them life skills, and all those important non-football related things of course. But from a football perspective, your goal is this. Put them and your team in the best position to succeed. And when it comes to creating a transfer super team of elite players, this also means helping them reach the next level. You're going to want a proven coach with a track record of success. Conference championships, national championships, and getting players to the league are all important. Location. Let's face it, as much as a 20-year-old probably loves living in a city like Madison, Wisconsin, or Lincoln, Nebraska, there are a lot of enticing opportunities in cities like Miami or LA that you can promote and that they can use to their advantage. Which ties into the third category, NIL. I mentioned it earlier, but money talks. If your school has a track record proving that boosters are willing to shell out big bucks to get the next great player to their university, and that the school will provide the player with plenty of NIL opportunities, that can often be what tips to scale for a potential transfer. A team that checks all of these boxes is USC. As much as people, mainly Sooner fans, like to point out Lincoln Riley's underwhelming college football playoff record, he won a conference title all but one year as a head coach and had been churning out NFL draft picks for Oklahoma, including two number one overall selections. The location of USC in Los Angeles makes it an enticing spot for potential transfers and rolls right into the many potential opportunities for NIL at their fingertips. Let's be honest, a couple of the transfers said it wasn't about money, but we all know that played a role. Naturally, the Trojans have been all about the transfer portal, and it won't come as a surprise that they have the number one ranked transfer class in the nation. To cover just a few along the offense, you're looking at a group of key contributors. Quarterback Caleb Williams, who before Oklahoma's late season collapse was lauded by some as a potential Heisman candidate despite the fact that he wasn't even the starter at the beginning of the year. Mario Williams, an Oklahoma receiver who started hitting his stride at the end of the year and had a full season with Caleb to develop a connection. Travis Dye, the former Oregon running back who had a breakout 2021 and was fifth in career rushing yards for the Ducks. And finally, Jordan Addison, who I think epitomizes this potential transfer super team shift. Last year's Belenikoff winner had no ties to Lincoln Riley or USC, but made his way over to LA to be part of what could end up being potentially one of the most potent offenses in the Pac-12, led by a group of first-year transfers. The real question is, will a team be able to succeed using this method of team building? Recruiting out of high school is still vital and the lifeblood of any program, but if a team can put together a few game-changing transfer classes in a row that lead to a national championship, don't be surprised if the portal becomes more of an emphasis going forward. And that's not just for coaches. If players see it succeed, 
Don't be surprised if players across the nation start getting together to figure out how they could team up to win a title. Players recruiting each other through the portal already happens, and I expect it to continue to happen more often, especially if the product is proven on the field. If USC continues to heavily focus on the transfer portal and finds success doing it, we might be witnessing a blueprint for a new era of college football. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this top 10 video here, subscribe for more content, and as always, thank you for watching and see you at the next one.